Oh yeah. Oh, that one pulled drag. Welcome back to the channel, Fishing Freaks. I've already got me a cooler with some bluegill in it. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing a catch and cook on those. I have never done a catch and cook with bluegill. Um, they're small, they're, they're a lot trickier. I, I mean, crappie's my favorite. Who doesn't love crappie? White bass, probably my number two, just because they're so easily accessible. But bluegill, I've heard are really good and I haven't messed around with them. And this lake right now is absolutely chocked with them. They're spawning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go catch some more of these, fill the cooler up a little bit more because they're so small. Like, I don't know how many it takes to, to fill you up. Get as many as we can, and then we're gonna head back to the treehouse, flay them up, and then come up with some special recipe. Actually, I got a really good idea. So I briefly explained this in the last video, but what I've been looking for on the electronics is it looks like craters on the side image and you turn your side imaging on we go make these distinct distinct potholes that are more distinct than bass beds even and on this lake the water's clear um, it's got rocks in it and they pretty much dig down to those rocks so there's some in this cove right here they're in the backs of the coves and they're also uh, just in like little marina areas, anywhere that's got a good bottom to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut down right here. Okay, I can see those light spotted areas in front of me. So there's definitely beds in here. And what I've been using is this rig right here. This is a, uh, a favorite fishing jackhammer. This is one of my favorite little light finesse rods. I even use it for crappies sometimes. It's a 6'6", medium light, very sensitive, four to 10 pound test uh, rated. And I've got six pound Guggen Mono on here, uh, which I also use for crappie fishing. I've got a, um, a, a bobber that has the attachments on top and bottom. I can't remember the exact name, but it's got a weight down there, a keel on it. I've got about a foot, um, a foot of leader it's actually not leader it's the same line what i like about these bobbers you can just clip them right on you don't have to tie a separate knot and then this is a, a number six cricket hook so it's got a long shank to it and it makes it easy for getting the crickets on there and it also makes it easy for the fish to get it in their mouth so the bluegills mouths are pretty small so you want to make sure you got got the right hook on there so that's a number six and then i've got a cricket tube that I purchased from the marina here. To shake them out. I got like 50 crickets for eight bucks or something. Little cricket tube. I had one of those as a kid. I don't know where it is now, but when I saw that in the marina, I was like, oh, that's cool. I need to, I need to get me one of those again. I don't want a big gap between the hook point and the cricket, basically. I'm trying to get it in there because they will, they will steal these suckers in a heartbeat. Oh, gosh. Nope, nope. Ah, dang go. Okay, little Jiminy. Let's do this. Oh man, there's a bunch up there. Got him. Come here, Boudreaux. You're gonna keep. You're gonna keep, Boudreaux. <gasps> oh gosh, it's behind me. Oh, they're good at doing that. Okay. Man, I can't wait to see how y'all taste. All right, add to our cooler. A few more up there, I wanna give a shot. They're gonna hit it off the top. Those are small. Try something real quick. A little grub or two on here. Let's see what they do on this. Since I'm running low on the crickets. Oh, it's getting attacked and I got, it. oh, it came off. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do for funsies. I can always go back to my cricket, but I wanna try a small fly using this method. Well, just a plain old black fly. Okay, this works right here. We're gonna be, 
in Slaytown. Oh, got him. Yes, sir. The fly does work. Got me a few decent ones added to the cooler. I think I'm about like 15 or so right now. You can keep 50. Coming up on a little rocky area. Ooh, I see some swirls in here. Golly, how in the world did I not eat that hook? Gotcha. Oh my. I think that's why. That's a little pooter pie right there. You're no bigger than Emmy. Oh, good one just smashed it. Oh, that's a that's a green sunfish. It's a green sunny. Going in the box. Got him. There we go. Pulling a little drag. Nice bluegill. Nice little pumpkin seed. Yes, sir. God, those are so beautiful. It's insane. Oh, got him. Got him up there in the shallows. Come here now, son. Caper. Using the crickets is, I mean, it's the juice. They cannot resist the crickets, but for time's sake, like speed's sake, this could be the better deal. One more spot before we gotta go in. I think I can get a few more right here. Willow tree, nice little pocket. Spawn central. Ooh, good one, good one, watch him. Get away from me, fly. Wow, oh, there we go. Look at that big old dog there. I mean, that's got a mouth like a large mouth. Big old green sunfish. Been spawning, look how nasty his tail is. It's been up there just making them beds. Not anymore. Pretty one. Like this fish looks like it belongs back in the water. These little puppies are small, but I'm gonna tell you what, it's pretty fun. And I like this little contraption that I've come up with it just it's it's really efficient like when you miss one you can just get back out there with the fly it was just I mean it's lure fishing but now we're gonna take it back to the treehouse we're going to prepare these and we're gonna put them in a special cooking device that I've never tried before hopefully it's gonna be good we're doing some tailgate filleting today now these have been chilling on ice overnight fish have turned a, a nice beautiful brown color definitely not as pretty as when we caught them but hopefully they're gonna be good again I've never had bluegill and I've never cleaned them but what how I'm going to do it is do the fillet method I bluegill are so small I guess you could do it another way I really haven't researched it or asked anybody but I'm planning on using the heads and scraps as bait anyway for catfishing this week so I'm just gonna take the fillets I doubt Stephanie is gonna eat a, a fish uh, that looks its whole in its form. Straight fillets. And something that I purchased on Amazon this week that is here is an air fryer. I have never used one before. Very interested. I heard of someone cooking some wings. A buddy of mine was cooking wings. He said it was real, they were really good. And I thought, hmm, I have never fried fish in one of these. I think it might be interesting to do, so we're gonna do it here today. Go with the standard fillet knife, no electric, since they're small and delicate. Just gonna go in right there. See how much meat we can get off this guy. Get past that rib cage. Yep, and I screwed it up. What I'm finding so far is there is a, a big, broad, extended rib cage with these bluegills. They're just a really broad fish. And that is what we're winding up with right there. Look how tiny that is. That's just a little a little morsel bite. <laughs> <sighs> okay, there's one. Let's, let's just try the big bluegill first. That was definitely on a bed. You can see that bloody tail there. Get under its little 
ear fin. I always try to cut up as close to the top of the head as I can because that seems to be the thickest part of their uh, of their fillet. So on the first fillet, I kind of figured out that that rib cage is so big right there. So I just need to cut around that and flip it over. Skin came off, that's okay. Wow. Okay, first time cleaning bluegills. Butchering it. Can't even imagine using an electric fillet knife on this. You'd have to be really good at it. Did that one a little better. It's pretty efficient on that one. There's a decent fillet. There we go. You always want to try to get it to where you can almost see through the fish. So that one's pretty good. It's translucent on the top. Feel good about that one. Okay, I need to get down to some ninja work here and I'll see you at the unboxing of the air fryer. I know as much about air frying as I do about going to the moon. This one I got is a Kasori. I basically just went on Amazon, got one of the highest rated ones that I saw. Okay, what is it gonna be? It looks like a toaster. Got some cautionary tales on the top as usual. Read caution on the back. We lost precautions in la parte posterior. Before you get started, there's plastic inside. Make sure to pull out and separate the baskets. Well, that's an important move. Don't want plastic in your golden crispies. Obviously, I had to figure this out before we cook anything. Oh. It has settings. Chicken, steak, shrimp, seafood, bacon, preheat. That's not a picture of a bluegill. I don't know what is. Look at that. Bluegill setting right there. I am still a little bit confused to be honest with you how this mechanism works. Like when you open this, it doesn't say, this is how air frying happens. They do have a YouTube channel though. YouTube's where you learn everything, right? I'm gonna get this about 10 minutes and we'll, we'll take- Okay, I understand now what is going on. It is basically like a couple of air dryers in there that just pump in the hot air and that is what's giving it the, the, the crispiness. It'd be like being in the middle of summer in Texas on a bass boat with 30 mile an hour winds and that's how your skin feels like. Golden crispy. Okay, I understand how this works now. In the kitchen with OSG. I think I need a bigger pan. <laughs> What are you doing in here? Because you kind of explained to me, but I wasn't sure. I see cheese. I am I making see corn grits. Yes, yeah, so we're making cheesy corn grits, but I'm gonna add serrano pepper and chives. And the cheese that I went with is a creamy Havarti cheese. I'm sorry, Amy, are you wanting to steal the show? Yes. Are you trying to steal the show here? Yeah. You always feel like you have to talk louder when we're talking. So with our fish, we're gonna have some corn grits. I yes. love grits, so this should be delicious. I, this is my first time making grits. Believe it or not, I've never made grits. You ain't no southern girl. You ain't no southern girl. You ain't never made no grits. Dagger. We are going with one of the usual suspects for uh, this special air frying. I'm gonna try flour with Frank's Red Hot. That's gonna be one of the things. I'm actually not gonna fry them here. I'm gonna fry them downstairs. We're doing the prep up here. And then we're gonna do a little bit of Cosmo Q Dry Rub SPG, salt, pepper, garlic, just with some butter. Because I don't know how the flour is going to, I don't know how, I'm still a little confused if the, the crispies are gonna happen. Like if the golden crispies will appear. I don't, I just looked up this air frying situation and it's, I don't know. I, I mean, if it comes out better than the actual frying method, I will I will be impressed. And this fishing freaks is how these gills turned out. Now this last one, I know for sure was 
a, a, a green sunfish. It was a real big one. That was one of the biggest ones I caught the whole time. I mean, that looks like a crappie fillet right there. Uh, this half over here, you're getting a butter. Cosmo SPG. Sprinkle a little bit on there. That was quite a bit actually, but. I mean, that freaks red hot if you're not too busy stirring your grits. Your grit pile over there, it whatever's is, going on. Woo, it's starting to boil. This is a critical moment. Come on now. <sighs> Hit me with that, Franks. Thank you. Franks, red hot wing, buffalo style. Just regular. Gonna hit him with a little bit of that. Wow, bam. Stir that in there. Make sure you don't touch your privates afterwards, or you will get a little. You get a zinger. First batch with the butter and the SPG. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Some of it got globbed up in there. Laid them down in the fryer. And we are ready to get them popping. Let's power the unit on. Let's see, let's go to this bluegill setting and see what happens. 350 at eight minutes. Let's pop that down. Five minutes, because these are tiny. Let's just hit go. What are you doing here? What are you doing here, air fryer? Air coming out the back. Circulation. I wasn't sure if the bottom was gonna get super hot. I didn't want to screw up my table, so I put a little uh, cutting board underneath. I can smell the spices coming out the back. So things are happening in here. At this point, it actually does smell like things are cooking in there. Get your nostrils back there, we get a nice whiff of fish. And it's warm coming out the back, but it's not, I mean, it doesn't feel like super hot. Two things going on here that are new though. Never, or at least I don't remember having bluegill or sunfish, and I've never had anything out of an air fryer. I do hear a sizzle. Well, looky there, I think those are done, y'all. I think I made a good decision on, on lowering the, uh, the time. And that's just butter, garlic, salt, and pepper. Let's see how it tastes. Okay, you. Simple enough. This sucker is hot. Ooh. I mean, it is steamy. Oh wow. Oh wow, we might have ourselves something here. That's very good. That's very good. Went with the butter on there. Now honestly, this is like this is like a baked situation. This is not like the fry. I, I do not think the flour for the Frank's Red Hot is gonna turn out the best, but wow, this way is great. And blue little sunfish, delicious. Oh my god. This is amazing. I gotta get a, I gotta get a OSG something. This is great. Oh hey, don't touch God. don't touch this because it's hot. Okay. But I want you to try one of these little guys. Ooh, it is hot. Ooh, 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 ah. Hot potato. Hot fish. How about it? It doesn't really taste like it's fried, but it's It's not fried, right? It's, it's just like baked. Very good. It's good, right? There's no oil on this? No, it's just butter, garlic, salt, and pepper. What? Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty darn good. good. And the bluegill's good, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's such a, like, you can almost see through them. It's so fresh and flaky. Very flaky. Ooh. I think our daughter is getting into something over there. No, I'm watching her. She can't. Okay. Yes, and you know what? That would, that would go great with the grits. I honestly. was going to say. Like, if you put that in the grits. On top of the grits? I mean, yes. Okay, I'm There's not There's something a... <laughs> southern happening there. I'm not huh? a grit person, so I have no idea if these are but okay. What is happening in here? <laughs> is that normal? <laughs> is that... Yeah, no, 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 no. That, that's, it has that a look... very rich, cheesy flavor. That's good. I mean, that's like when you would do a shrimp and grit situation. Mm -hmm. That'll put... Some, some bulk on your booty. You know what I would do though? I don't have this, but if I had some time to whip up some bacon. Yeah. A little bacon bits. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, instead you got you got these. Yes. I, I don't think that the Franks with the flour is gonna turn out good. You don't think Cause, so? Yeah, because I don't think it's actually it's not frying. It's just like baking. Well, that's because there's no 
flower. Yeah, 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 no, I know. I'm totally. I'm again. This is the first time I've ever doing this. So, when I, I literally took air fry fryer, like literally, like it's frying it. But I don't know. Maybe it is gonna work out good. Boy. <laughs> Welcome to having kids. Okay, Amy's gonna try a piece. Mom just washed off a little. She can't have all the salt yeah, and deliciousness because it'll probably give her diarrhea diapers. We don't want that. You even touched one. And there you go. No, what do we got there? Ooh, ooh, no. <laughs> okay, she's doing the block <laughs> method. Just gonna plop these in some flour. All right, now. I am the most curious about this part because some of these I put flour on and I want to see how the flour turns out on top of the franks. Normally that would go in the grease again, but some just have straight franks on them. Some have franks and then flour. So let's turn the unit on. Let's go to our bluegill setting. It's kind of funny. You can really smell whatever's coming out of there from the back. It's like, you put your eyes back there, but that Frank's red hot. It'll get your eyeballs. Come on. What's going on in there? Give me something crispy. Uh, as I suspected, the flour is still on there. They're not golden crispies. Actually, they're not really crispy. This is a this is a form of fast baking, in my opinion. It gets them a little crispier because of the air that's going over them. So I can see why why the chicken wings would be excellent. It does have its place in the fish cooking world. Now let's give it a shot here. Straight up Frank's, nothing else. Still good. Very impressed with bluegill. I will definitely go back and catch those again, but eating them is a delicious bonus. I will be looking at bluegill fishing a little differently now. See why big bass love to indulge on them. Tastes like a bluegill buffalo wing. Really good. So my verdict on this thing is, it's not getting the golden crispy, but it does make it not crispy, but kind of like a drier effect in, instead of if it was in the oven it'd be more of like a sogginess especially sitting in a pan that's probably part of it you have air flowing all around so it just cooks faster and if y'all want to pick one of these up i will leave an affiliate link an amazon affiliate link down below if you want to experiment with your fish or whatever you like to cook if you want to try one out if you've never done it before and if you have experience with these and you've cooked fish in them Leave your comments down below for uh, for things you would like to see or recipes or or whatever. But I'm definitely going to be using this again and experimenting around with it. So I want to hear your thoughts. I'm going to get up here to these cheese grits and spend some time with my gals, y'all. But make sure to hit the like button for another good catch and cook. If you've never tried bluegill, I'm telling you, they are good. And if you want to check out the new Eat Sleep Dangle teas, they are available at the merch store. Link is down below. Thanks again for tuning in today, and I'll see y'all on the next one.